Okay, I'm here with my wife, Tricia, and my good friend, Craig Brocky, who's down from Vancouver, British Columbia, and we're going to demonstrate an NCR treatment as is currently being taught in the news training classes. So first we'll have Craig start lying face down on okay. the table. And then Tricia and I will begin. So there's a few different phases in the NCR bodywork. The first part is based primarily on muscle energy, so we will find knots in the musculature using muscle energy techniques and start working on those knots. You notice that we attempt to use two hands at all times. This is done to move the energy in di different areas of the body more quickly. As we release more and more of the knots, we start looking at the patterns of symmetry displayed in the skeleton. So in addition to working with the muscle energy, we'll start actually slowly moving the bones with these deep pressures into more symmetrical patterns. We don't just work on the person's back, we also work on their front. The legs, the abdomen, the chest, and then finally we'll work on the skull. When we work on the pelvis and abdominal areas, we go in quite deeply, releasing the deep pelvis muscles as well as the psoas and even working up towards the diaphragm. When we work on the chest, we use two hands, one on the front, one on the back. The hands are compressed together to release the deep muscles inside the rib cage area as well as moving the bones slowly. This is external cranial manipulation slowly molding the bones to improve the patterns of symmetry as displayed in the skull. Once again, note the two hand patterns because the hands have to roll the different bones into more symmetrical positions because the deep bone in the skull, the sphenoid, resists change with rapid single bone movements. I'll keep measuring again and again to create lines through different anatomical parts so we can see if the lines are becoming parallel not only to each other but to the plane that would be beneath their feet as if they were standing. Finally, we stand a person up to push on their body to watch joint by joint how stable each joint is. There are alternate techniques that can be used on people that are unable to stand or even to sit. As we map out these areas, it will allow us to position the person for the final phase of the treatment in a more stable position which allows us to use less and less pressure. We're most concerned with 
the areas in the skull, especially the greater wings of the sphenoid, as I'm testing here. You'll note that I stop after that lower left part of the sphenoid is touched, and this is the indicator as to where to use a small balloon to move the sphenoid a bit further. We also put a wooden roller behind the back to stretch the meninges from the spine to the base of the skull. This also causes greater movement. The assistant stabilizes the body by uh, moving the legs in the positions that we found through testing. Finally, the balloon is inserted through the nostril into the top of the throat and inflated for approximately one second. And that's the completion of the treatment.